Welcome back to these masterclasses from Skahoy Innovation Lab. We are going through some training material. We are now at the fourth video. We have covered how to set up feedback on buttons and knobs and layers and, and so on. And we now need to look at event handlers. How do we take in a button press and do something with it? The context is that we have this variable that is driving a menu and a variable inside Reactor is uh, a custom value holder in the system that we can use to drive different things. For instance, this variable has three different values, VMAX, presets, cam select. If I press these buttons, I am forcing a value upon them. And in the previous videos, we associated that with behavior that you can see on this emulated panel. But now on this button down here, which is A6 in the tree, we now want to add event handlers. Event handlers, what do you think they do? Handle events. An event is when you press a button, when you turn a knob, when you move a fader, when you pull a joystick, that's an event. Or it should create an event. And inside a panel, it creates an event like a button press message, button is pressed down, button is released. When we move a fader, it will create an event with the position of the fader. And we need to react to those events and associate them with changes of parameters. Inside our system, we call a parameter an IO reference. And that is because in a very generic way, it's not always a parameter in a camera we want to change. We want to change sometimes a variable. And that's exactly what happens on this button. Later in this series, we'll be looking at how we can change stuff on cameras, actually. But right now, we are changing a variable because that variable is driving our menu. And therefore, we need to go here and change uh, or set up an event handler to change the value of the variable. And we are intending on cycling the value, just like we saw the step change action do. So we would set up cycle as an event handler. Now, what I'm typing in here with an uppercase C, it's just some label that I'm choosing to identify the, the event handler. It's a name. So this is why I can pick anything I want, create new of those. I can expand it and now I can choose a handler type. I'll create binary because we have a button and buttons are binary like it's either or either or and the type of the button would be act down. That means we push it down. So that's the event we get when we do that. And act up, guess what? That is when we release. Then we have an edge filter. Why? Because Skyhoy has technology that blows your mind sometimes. And that is most of the buttons in any of our panels are four-way buttons, meaning that a press on top, bottom, left, right edge of the buttons will or can be detected differently. Now, by default, any edge being pressed will give you a trigger like act down here, but you can choose. Yeah, you can explicitly choose any edge, but it would be the same as no edge. Oh, ah, no, that's not true. It would be the same as this one up here. No edge is actually something you can use if you have single uh, one way buttons like an NKK button and you specifically want to make sure that only when an NKK button, a one way button is pressed, then we do something. Then you would choose no edge. Otherwise, you have top left button, right? And you have also one that's called left, right, and you have one called encoder because on encoders, we also have button presses. So in this case, we'll just pick any edge. So we will not really uh, have an edge filter on this guy. Oh, yeah, well, we can pick any edge. If you think this is nicer to look at, then we have a, a mode. So what's going to happen when we press this, when we receive this trigger? We can either set a value. We can toggle a value between some options. We can add. Hmm, that's an advanced one. That is because whenever you actually set a variable value, you could actually have multiple values, but that's for a different day. So just forget about these options. Uh, they are pretty cool and they're being used in camera selectors where you can select multiple cameras and do like batch processing of stuff. But the one called cycle up and roll over, that's the one we want. Cycle up and roll over means that we would uh, go to the top and then it will fall over to the first value. You can choose cycle up or cycle down would be the same thing. It's just the direction, right? So let's pick this guy. And then as so-called set values, this is where we would then uh, insert the values that, um, let me see, we need to do that as literals. And we know we have three values that we want to set. Now, maybe you are once again thinking, wouldn't it be great if I could insert the values that are known to be associated with this variable? Yes, sir. However, once again, we cannot build Rome in one day. So therefore, I am now inserting these values manually because I know these are the values that are associated with the variable, these three values. Okay, so I now put them in right here in my event handler. 
Guys, we are ready to try. So when we press this one down, then any edge, it would cycle the values. Let's test it, okay? There we go. That is nice. Cool. Hey, it's working. I don't even know what to do with the rest of this video, except that I could actually expand a little bit on, in, in this case where we are setting all the values, I, I would have a chance to actually do that in a smarter way. But the advantage of this one is that I could remove one of the values like this. And as we now only have two, we're just cycling between those two values, even though there are actually three values possible for this one. So that would allow you to associate this with other buttons and knobs, or you could have an encoder that would only do two things, or you could have a, like a secret hidden button somewhere that would access the third option. All such things. You know exactly what I mean, I'm pretty sure. I want to open up your eyes to see the potential of this. Now, um, let's just edit this one again, because there is a chance that we can basically tell the system, why don't you take all the options that exist for this variable and use those? And that's exactly what we are going to do. So I just want to quickly say that overall, we have associated a variable or a parameter, the menu variable, with this whole behavior. So, you know, if nothing else is told to the behavior, that's the reference we are using, the IO reference, the parameter, the variable. That's the one that we are manipulating when nothing else is said. So what we can do in here is to basically open this up to show more and say, we want to take the behavior IO reference, and then we add a modifier, which, and this is the secret source that only Casper knows and the guys who have these slides and find the link to the secret place where we keep all these modifiers until the day we have them as a drop down for you guys coming up. Now, press submit. <clears throat> that reference here will give you the same thing. It is now pulling information out of the system. What are the options for the variables and cycling through them? But it will give you them in the order of the variable now. Okay, so that's basically it. That's, that's what I could show you over here. However, I feel like I want to do other things. And it could be fun to add something to event handlers that would give you like uh, left would we'll just add one to left. So when I press to uh, to the left side, I'm I'm uh, cycling down, and when I'm pressing on the right side, I'm cycling up. Uh, so I'll just do that uh, right. Create that one. If I go into left, I'll say handle type. Oh, sorry, binary. It's just uh, when I press it down. Yes, edge filter. That would be the left edge of the four way button. What should it do? It should cycle down. And what should it do it on? Well, uh, please take the IO reference, all options of that guy and insert here. Let's just see if that works. Uh, let's just confirm that on the bottom edge, we are just cycling through rolling over. If I press the left edge, I am apparently also doing so. Not happy. Why is that? That is because I have this cycle thing down here that is using any edge. Not a good thing. I need to associate that with the button mesh. So you see, when you start working with event handlers, you better keep your mind spun up on the combinations. They are separate. They are independent from each other. In other words, this event handler cycle doesn't know that we have left and right. So as I'm pressing the lower edge of this one, and when I try to press the left edge, guess what happened? The, this event handler cycle also got the trigger, and now two actions were changing the same variable, and that got a little bit complicated. So let's just see. I can basically, if I go to cam select, cycle down, and now it doesn't matter anymore that I'm pressing. So we got that right. Let's do this one, the right one, set up binary. Uh, I actually don't need the binary type because the act down is the default. Now I'll choose the, the right edge. I'll set the, the mode to cycle up. And then the set values are going to be those we had just before, behavior and IO reference. Whoops, sorry about that. We need to add the modifier all, which is the one that will give us the options. So here we are. And we can now see, OK, I'm cycling up. I'm going down. And it, the point here is that you are reaching end stops, right? Beyond when you hit the highest value, you can't get any further. And sometimes that's pretty neat. Uh, otherwise, it's like forever. 
going on. And that's not always convenient. But on the, uh, the low edge, it does. So what you have seen, guys, <clears throat> is that we have now three event handlers that makes it a little bit the complex navigation scheme of this button. It's probably overkill for what we want to do. But I couldn't resist to show you. And I think this is fun and cool and pretty amazing what you can do with Reactor in this way.